Hello, everyone. Jen Pike here, functional diagnostic nutritionist, founder of the Simplicity Project and the Hormone Project. I wanted to share another little educational video with you about one of the functional tests that I run inside of my company. So in the Hormone Project, when I'm working with women, um, we do blood analysis, we do a Dutch hormone panel test on them, and then we also offer the option to do upgraded testing. So we might offer things like organic acids, hair trace mineral analysis, and a GI map test. Sometimes other things, but those tend to be the four or five tests that we move through most commonly. Now, a GI map test, that is what I'm actually going to be talking to you about today. And it's what I'm actually going to take you through in terms of what the GI map test is, what it's testing and looking for. I'm also going to be showing you a sample test um, so that you have some framework and understanding. So we are going to get going. So the GI map test, this is a gastrointestinal test. And what it is looking at is the GI map was truly designed to help to understand and detect microbes that might be disturb disturbing normal function in your body. And producing symptoms. So things like impacting digestion, gas, bloating, heartburn, reflux, major inflammation, inability to absorb certain nutrients. And it can really also tell us a lot about what's going on with your immune function, your body's vulnerability and propensity towards autoimmune conditions and so much more. So it's measuring your GI microbiota DNA. That's really what it's looking at. So these tests are fairly sophisticated. And it's really important that when you are going through this, that you are actually working with somebody who not only knows uh, or has the ability to run the test, but understands what the test is interpreting. So if you've ever joined me in any of these educational series before, I've done this and taught it about the Dutch test. You can't just simply look at the information that comes on the test alone. You have to then take it back into what was talked about in the consultation. And as a practitioner, you're really trying to put the puzzle pieces together. So this test, the GI map test, comes from a lab called Diagnostic Solutions. This is one part of the puzzle. So this is a poop test that you're doing. This is a stool analysis. The test is shipped to you at your home. You do it in privacy, obviously. Um, so you, you poop in a container. I'm going to walk you through this. Okay. So that there's no shocks. There's no surprises. You poop into a container. It essentially looks like a French fry container. And once you do that, there is a small little vial, a small little tube. And when you unscrew the top of that, there's a solution in it. And on that, there's a tiny little spoon and you scoop out four different samples of that fecal matter that you put into the bottle. It shows you exactly where you have to fill it up to. You give it a shake, you seal it, you wrap it, everything, you're sent all the things that you need to have, um, instructions on how to take the test, how you need to ship it back, when you need to ship it back. I always recommend that clients take it on a Saturday or a Sunday, so you can ship it first thing on Monday morning to get it back to the lab by Friday of that week. But again, that's all explained to you. And then we get your results a couple of weeks later. So some of the different things that we would be looking at this test is to measure bacterial pathogens, viruses. It's looking at parasites, worms, protozoas. It's looking at candida and fungi, um, antibiotic resistance as well too. It's also going to give us a better indication of what's going on with certain aspects of your digestive system. Do you need enzymes? Do you need things to help to heal the lining of the gut wall? Do you truly have a gluten sensitivity or a cross-reactive gluten sensitivity, depending on what you're eating, what you're using, consuming, and taking into your body? What level of inflammation is going on? Women who I'm working with where when we test their Dutch and see that estrogen is an issue, it's either unbound, it's not being detoxified optimally, phase two detoxification where glucuronidization takes place. If we see in their stool that they have high levels of beta glucuronidase, this can be a bugger. This can literally be what is like the bottleneck and in interfering with their body's ability to properly methylate. So there's a lot of information. There's a lot of time behind the scenes that goes into it. So as a practitioner, when I get someone results, I, I really have to sit back, look through it all. And as a client, you know, I get it. It's, it's hard. People will, you know, they'll get the results sometimes reach out and it's like, okay, well, what do I need to do? Okay. So I've done this for a week. Now what? And it's like, if you have major things going on and if you have big things going on, like you've been told your whole life that you were part of the lactose intolerant club, y'all are 
you're all human, you're not cows. It's very difficult to break that down. And oftentimes for people, it's not even the lactose, it's the casein, it's the whey, it's the albumin, or it's a combination of a couple or all four of those entities that make up cow's dairy. Um, for other people, if you've been told you've had IBS your whole life, we can actually see markers in this that will distinguish between irritable bowel syndrome and IBD, which is inflammatory bowel disease. People who are suffering from issues like chronic diarrhea, chronic constipation, gas and bloating. Perhaps you have something like SIBO, small intestinal bacterial overgrowth going on, or LIBO, which is impacting the large intestinal tract. Or perhaps you have something else that's going on that's off-gassing in your system that's contributing to and causing all of these problems. We can see so many of these different factors um, in this exact test. So I'm gonna be showing you a sample here. So give me a moment to screen share. And again, keep in mind, I am a practitioner, but I am not your practitioner. And these things take time. They take time. So if, like I said, if you've been dealing with something for as long as you can remember, or maybe it is acute, I'm sorry, I have something in my eyeball. Maybe it is acute, but it is, it's pretty gnarly. Like it has come after you with a vengeance. You have to be patient and understand that this is going to take time. There's going to be different layers and levels of how you are going to work through removing, repairing, re-inoculating, rebuilding your system back up. This does not happen in a couple of weeks. We are talking months on months, sometimes even longer. And I'm not saying it's going to take that long to feel a difference, to feel like you are improving, but to actually be able to move through proper eradication, to implement antimicrobials, to create any kill off if that's necessary, and then to go back in and make sure that you're actually healing and sealing what has been done, that takes time and it takes compliance on the client's end of things. So as practitioners, we can explain to you what's going on. We can give you really solid information and strategies and protocols and herbs and supplements and dietary guidelines, but we cannot do the work for you. And I think that's really important to understand. Okay. So as you can see here on my screen, um, this is a sample. I do not know this individual. Um, and this is how the test comes to you. So this is a five page document. Now, the first part here is looking at bacterial pathogens and you can see exactly what is being tested. And so here we're looking at things like C. difficile. We're looking at different factors of E. coli. Um, I can tell you, I've worked with many women before who their digestion actually wasn't the big issue when they came into the hormone project. They couldn't sleep. Um, they were just feeling really tired. They had acne, period problems. We worked through solving all of those things. And then all of a sudden, they end up with diarrhea or they end up with some type of bowel change. And that is also, I think, a reality that does not get talked enough about in in the world of, of healing and holistically balancing your body is we're not suppressing. So unlike if you were given a prescription for something, an antibiotic, an antifungal, a protein uh, pump inhibitor, um, uh, a selective serotonin reuptake inhibitor. So antidepressants, anti-anxiety, anti-acid, all these different things, their main job when they go into your system is shut up, turn off, stop irritating me, send me no more messages. That is a form of suppression. Go in, just get rid of it. I don't care what the side effect or the repercussion is on the other side of this. When we're working on holistically doing this, the reason it takes longer, the reason you have to have patience is because we are healing as we uncover. So for a lot of people, not just women, but a lot of people, what happens is you start to implement these changes. You calm and cool the initial inflammation. You start to feel better. And you're like, oh my gosh, this is like amazing. This is a game changer. Life is so much better. And then you hit a blip, right? It's like you're climbing, you're climbing, you're going good. And then you come up over the top and it's like you trip and you somersault your whole way down the hill. And you, then you're in the valley for a period of time until you can get the strength to climb back up. This is like the healing journey. So as we are healing the top surface things, you oftentimes start to uncover the root cause the real issue as to what is going on. So here you can see in this individual, they have high levels of C. difficile. So probably going to have, um, you know, diarrhea, different flu-like symptoms, possibly, you know, low-grade fever. It all depends. And this is the thing is that you can't just go Wikipedia 
or Google what some of the signs and symptoms of these things would be. You can get a general understanding, but then every host, every human's body is going to show up with this slightly differently. Now, the other important thing, and this is explained to you as well um, in your sessions and in the test, is the way in which these are measured. And so if you look in the results column and you'll see undetectable, okay, up here at the top where you've got that little arrow cursor and then the DL. So there's no, um, there's, there's no result in that. And then you see those that are red and say hi, obviously get your attention. But then look here, we have those in black, E. coli 8.60 exponents. We've got um, the other one down here, Yersinia, which is 4.46. And because it's not red and highlighted, so many people will say to me, oh, you know, I saw the results you sent back to me. It didn't look too bad. There was only one or two things red and highlighted. And I'm like, Okay, let me explain to you how this actually is interpreted and what it means. So anywhere that we see a measurement, you'll see black, you'll see red, and you will see yellow. These are the things that really need our attention. Now, outside of these bacterial pathogens, we're also looking at things like parasitic pathogens. Um, so these are actual parasites that have created a home inside of the host body that are stealing your nutrients, that are robbing you of all of the actual nutrition and food that you are putting into your body, which is why so many people will say things like, I don't understand why I have chronically low B vitamins, chronically low minerals. My iron is low. My vitamin D is low. You know, we do organic acid tests and see all these markers are low. And yet you look at the individual's diet and they're eating all these healthy foods and it doesn't seem to make Make a difference. It's because when you eat, they will get what they want to need first. They will literally through the process of your body, trying to digest and break these foods down, be like, Oh, I need some of this. Give me that. Oh, you've got hemoglobin, rich red blood cells and iron. I'm literally going to go in and gobble up that and take it for me. So I say, stay strong. And they don't take everything because parasites, pathogens, viruses, they need their host to stay alive. They're not trying to kill you. They're just going to weaken you enough because they need to serve themselves first. Assholes. That's what they are. Okay. But we all, we have to understand more than 90% of our, you know, hundred percent human body, more than 90% of us is made up of species. We have over a hundred trillion different types of species, cells, viruses, and bugs that are making up our entire ecosystem and our biota. So we have the ecosystem in your poop, you have your microbial ecosystem in your gut and your intestinal tract, which we're testing through the poop. You have your vaginal microbiome as women. You have your skin microbiome. You have your oral microbiome. We have multiple different ecosystems all coexisting in this one big environment. And the more you can start to learn about that, respect and understand it, the greater respect and understanding you're going to have for what the word healing and getting healthier and more resilient and supported actually means for your body. So we look at parasites, we look at viral pathogens, we look at H. pylori. Um, the latest statistics say that more than 50% of all humans walking around have some level of H. pylori um, in their body. And now the thing with H. pylori is that most people who have it don't have any symptoms. So you might not feel like you have any gastro issues. Some people do have a lot of symptoms. And then you wanna look at things called virulence factors. So the more virulence factors that you have, the more issues that there may be. This can increase your risk for certain issues, different inflammatory issues. And it can be different in everyone. It could just mean that you have a higher propensity towards having severe heartburn, ulcers as well too gastric cancers. Um, you know, and this is something that I'm very familiar with. My father was diagnosed with a gist tumor, which was at the bottom of the esophageal junction that joins to the stomach more than 10 years ago, had to have half of his stomach removed. He has been in remission for the last decade. Thank goodness. Um, but this is like, you know, when you see these things, this isn't just like, huh, interesting. This is to get your attention. And it doesn't mean you have something like what my father went through, but this is that you understand that the longer this stays in your system, the longer that we're leaving it there and that we're disregarding it and we're not supporting your digestion and your body and eradicating some of these things, you have an increased risk for other autoimmune conditions. Even things like increased risk for some of these bacteria we're looking at for things like lupus, for rheumatoid arthritis, for MS. It's really, really important to wrap your head around. This is not just a concept. This is matter of fact that your whole health begins in your gut. This is literally the foundation, the barometer. It is the underpinnings of the house that you are building. 
on top of all of that. It is so, so critical and important that you understand that. Um, and I will also tell you, and we have to do our due diligence as practitioners, that when we find somebody who tests positive for H. pylori, we are to tell you to go to your family doctor. A family doctor is most likely going to prescribe, um, usually it's never one, it's multiple rounds of antibiotics to try to kill the H. pylori. Um, and so I am supposed to tell you to do that, but I can also tell you um, in good ethical confidence that there are many positive things that we could try first to eradicate this and support your body before going that route, okay? Because oftentimes the reason we're gonna see a lot of things show up positive in the test that could be irritating you is because of years of using antibiotics, medications, over-the-counter, um, you know, things like Advil, Tylenol, um, Nexium, different things like that, Gaviscon, all of that. So just important to understand that. Then we're looking at your normal bacteria flora. Now people ask me all the time, why do we need to test my normal bacteria flora? We want to make sure that you have a healthy enough amount. So it's like Goldilocks and the three bears. Too much of a good thing, not so good. Too little of a good thing, not so good. We want it somewhere right in the middle. So you can see that this woman has a combination of a little bit too much in certain aspects, a little bit too low in others, very high in her acromensia this is going to be an issue for her. She probably has a lot of inflammation, a lot of gas and bloating, probably joint pain as well too. Um, and I would also assume based on this that she probably feels unwell more often than she feels good and has energy. So again, really important to understand. What I love about looking at the normal bacteria flora is this is what helps me to suggest what type of a probiotic might be needed for that individual if a probiotic is needed because I don't always give probiotics right out of the gates. We might need to do some antimicrobials, some antifungals, some rebalancing, remineralizing, rebuilding of the body before adding something like a probiotic in. Then we're looking at the phylomicrobiota. Again, this is really helping us to have a level of indication of what's going on in terms of damage, in terms of inflammation, in terms of the body's ability to truly absorb and uptake the, the, the nutrients that you are consuming. Now, if I was working with you right now as a client and these were your results, I wouldn't be whipping through these like this. I would be pausing and breaking down and explaining to you what each one of these where you have a positive a high or you have a low, a deficiency, that yellow region so that you really understand what is going on. And then again, it's all recorded because this is massive information to try to absorb and digest, to try to break down all three puns intended. Um, and then here we look at the opportunistic bacteria. So this is where the main focus of these guys are to create and produce inflammation. And so this woman, woman has a lot. She has a lot of different things going on. Now, what's important to understand as well, too, is I talked to you about a few of the different um, areas, the microbial areas, ecosystems in our body, that oral microbiome, vaginal skin, gut, your issues can show up in multiple places. So a lot of the women I work with, there might be digestive issues, but chronic urinary tract infections, chronic yeast infections, rashes, acne, lots of cavities, bad breath, tongue coated, gingivitis, gums bleeding. A lot of these different things can be linked to and connected to what is going on in the various cavities in our body. And remember, we have holes for a reason. We have certain holes, right? Pores and, and holes in different organs and things like that, so that they are endogenous and exogenous, meaning we have these so that certain things can come into our body and certain things can be moved and pushed out of the body. So if there's any level of congestion, any level of too much, any level of deficiency, your body is going to communicate. Your body is going to start to mirror back to you how it is feeling and it does that to get your attention your body is not broken your body is not a jerk your body is not trying to piss you off and to interfere with your life your body is your best friend and your body is trying to get your attention we are the problem <laughs> we typically up here up here is the issue we don't make time we don't listen we suppress we tell it to shut up we shame we name call you know we do all of these things to our poor bodies and it is trying to convince you to press pause pay attention get properly tested understand what's going on don't just get a test like this or the dutch or an hgma or your blood work or whatever it may be and not ask for a copy of it not 
be willing to ask the extra questions to understand. And that being said, remember, we cannot go in and everywhere we see red or everywhere we see black in this and yellow change everything all at once. There's a system. There's a system of going through and understanding where we need to start at. And it's a dance. Let's start with this strategy first. Okay. How's your body responding? Okay. Things are going well. Let's take the next step forward. Oh, oh, things aren't going well. Okay. We have to back off a little bit. And this is how we titrate what we're giving you, how we're giving it to you, the lifestyle pieces, all of that. So remember that any type of protocol is going to be based on yes, always with gut, there's going to be herbs, supplementation, botanical, sometimes homeopathic remedies, there's going to be different things like that that you are taking. The diet is going to be very, very important because why in the world would we have you taking antifungals and antimicrobials and then tell you it's totally fine to still have your dairy and your sugar and your burgers and you know all of your fried stuff and your cakes. It's never going to happen. <laughs> That does not make sense. One lives over here and one lives way, way over here, not in alignment with one another, okay? Um, and then it's also gonna be your stress, your sleep, your movement, stimulating your lymphatic system. There's going to be different things. Um, and then we also look at potential autoimmune triggers. So this again is really important when we're talking about, I mean, the rise of autoimmune illness and disease now is astronomical. It's absolutely crazy. Whether we're talking about something like autoimmune conditions within the endocrine system, specifically the thyroid, we're talking about autoimmune conditions of the gut, autoimmune conditions of the nervous system, of the brain, of our, you know, our neurology in our body, our joints. There's so many different things that people are suffering from now. A lot of people don't realize cancer is an autoimmune condition. Um, you know, diabetes, uh, dementia, which is type three diabetes. We could be seeing so many of these markers in your system if we were being tested appropriately and then educated. Here we also look and see fungi and yeast. Do you have candida? What type is going on? What are the levels at? Do you have viruses? So these viruses, um, you know, oftentimes we, a lot of people, as I said, about 50 to 60% of people at some point in their life have had these two types of viruses, mono being one of the more common. And these are stealth infections. They hang out behind the scene in your body. Um, and so you could have had something in the past that has created a level of vulnerability and is causing aggravation. And stealth means that they hang up behind the scenes. They're just like that opportunistic bacteria. They wait for an opportunity. They wait for you to be low on energy. They wait for you to be run down. They wait for you to have uh, a poor diet, excess stress, whatever it may be. And that's their time to pounce. And so we want to be able to get in front of that and get ahead of that. Then we're looking at protozoa. So again, a different form and type of parasites, looking at worms as well too, and then the actual intestinal health itself. So when we're looking at things like steatocrit and we're looking at elastase, these are things that I would look at that help me to determine whether or not this individual um, needs some support digestively. Do you need enzymes? Um, it's also important to know, does this individual still have a gallbladder? If they don't, the enzymes that they require might be different than somebody else. Are they plant-based? They're going to need plant-based enzymes as opposed to ox bile, those types of things. The GI markers of the beta-glucuronidase, this is the one I was talking to you about that can impact your ability for glucuronidization and your methylation ability, which is your phase two detoxification in your body, okay? Is there blood that is showing up in the fecal matter as well too? Big sign of inflammation. Secretory IgA is gonna give us an indication of how strong your immune system is and where do we need to support that? The anti-gliadin IgA, this is a marker for gliadin, which is the protein that is found in wheats and a lot of gluten-containing foods. Now, I find for a lot of people, you can hear my dog crying in the background. Yes, Charlie. It's not a child, it's a dog. Um, which if you have pets, you are more susceptible to have some of these different things because they have their own gut and their own microbes and their own, like every, this is the whole thing, like masking ourselves, you know, putting ourselves into a bubble. We need to be exposed. Our bodies need to have biodiversity. We are soil. We are just like that. And we need to have this exposure to strengthen our bodies, to build up our immunity and to have that resiliency. Okay. So really important. We're going to ignore her. 
um, inflammation here, calprotectin. Okay. So again, we can actually measure and see these calprotectin levels, these inflammatory levels in your body. Um, there's different tests like zonulin, which are add on that will actually help us to understand Charlie, sweetie, hold on folks. She needs on the bed. star of the show. You can also see my zoom outfit, pajamas on the bottom, zoom on top. Honest to goodness. See, watch. She's going to go mess all the pillows up. <laughs> oh, small little, little creatures and children. Um, Yes. So um, leaky gut, these types of things. So it's amazing. I love this test. The other thing here is that it actually will test if you have antibiotic resistant genes. And the reason it will test for this is because if you measure high for some of the factors up top, like typically it would be H. pylori, this would let your practitioner know that that antibiotic that might be prescribed, say it's an amoxicillin that may be described for H. pylori, um, or in this case, uh, clarithromycin, you or this woman has tested positive for that, this would not be a good option to give her because she has a resistance to that. So it's going to cause more gut damage. It's not going to do the job that her practitioner is hoping for. Okay, so it's some really, really good information that we get on this test. And the hard thing is, I'm just going to do a stop share here. The hard thing is, is trying to understand all of this on your own and you're not meant to. And, you know, I even have a lot of practitioners who reach out and, you know, where do you get the extra testing? Where can you go and do this? It is years and it is learning and it is researching and it's mentoring other or under other practitioners as well, too. Um, I always recommend as well, if you are a practitioner listening to this, run the test on yourself with a practitioner first. Never run a test you don't actually, you've never done on yourself or you don't understand how to move someone through because you can make things worse sometimes for people. So it's really important um, that you know you, you understand what you're doing. And for those of you who are actually signing up and, and taking the test, if you're adding this onto a package that you have, that you understand exactly what's going on and you understand that you cannot change everything at once, that there is going to be a, a system and a protocol and a sequence that you are going to move through. So I hope that breaks down a little bit more understanding of what the GI map test is. You've now have some framework having seen it and gone through some of those examples. If you have any questions about running this test, this is an upgraded test that we offer inside of the Hormone Project. You can reach out to us, hello at genpike.com to get more information today. Have an awesome rest of your day, everyone. Take care.